It is time for Byte 5 of our crime mystery game using Python, right? So in this Byte, we're going to learn how to connect to databases, and we're going to drop tables, and we're going to look at the contents of the data set and present that to our player, okay? So what we're going to do is basically this. You see here, this we've done already. Do you accept the challenge? Yes, I've changed yes or no to YN because it's easier for the user to write and not to make mistakes. Let me probably the runtime run off. Yes, and then you do Ruth, and then it, it's a little bit of text. It says, hello, welcome to Curl Crime Labs. Let's get you initiated. To be able to solve this murder, you will need to familiarize yourself with the crime database. The following tables are available. These will be generated by pandas. And then we will give them options to explore the different tables. So you say, okay, I want to see table one. And then it will give the data structure. These we're going to develop further later on. It would be cool to have some statistics of the table, some visualization of it, things like that. But yeah, that's the best. That's how much I want to do. And then it will ask the user, like, hey, do you still want to see any more tables? And they say, yes, it'll show the list again and say, okay, I want to see now eight. And it will continue until the user say no. And when it says no, we're going to cut it for now. Obviously, the game will continue later on, but for this byte, we'll stop there. Okay, so let's go to, you will see the notebook here when it gets released on YouTube. For those of you that are members that have access, early access to these, you have already the byte on your uh, Google drive, okay? So just go there and pick it up. So go here, it'll take you to Python or to um, GitHub. In here, you will see a new folder called data and there you have the database. You need to download this. To download, you click on it. And then here on raw, if you click on it, it will download a copy. You will need that copy, okay? And then on the bytes, when byte 5 is ready for public use, then you will see here, you click on it, it'll take you to Google Collab. I think we should move away from Google Collab very, very soon, because at this point, you probably have decided that you want to learn Python and you have your own installation, right? But for now, just for this, Google Collab, uh, to access the database, you need to upload it, okay? So you need to go um, in here, and then in the folder, and then you go up here, and then you browse to the database that you just downloaded and you upload it. It will stay there just during the time that you have the notebook open. When it closes, the database will go away and you will have to load it again. That's why I say that we should start moving to our own installation of Python, okay? So this is probably the last video we'll do on Google Collab, and then we will move to um, you still get the notebooks though, but you know, I can continue developing on my PC instead of here. So, the first thing that we need to do is import two libraries. We're going to import or two modules. Is The first one is called SQLite3, and this is the one that allows us to work with the database, to query the database. And then we're going to, if you click, press enter, import Pandas. So Pandas is um, the same as Parquery, exactly the same. I mean, I think that both of them are actually quite amazing. And they are as easy, both of them. So you can actually Google something and copy paste and it works. It's fabulous. <laughs> so you import Pandas as PD because all the commands that require the Pandas library will have PD in front of it. Okay. So that's why it says has PD. Okay, once you have it, shift enter. So it loads the modules into, mo into memory. Okay, cool. Now we're going to read the database. To read the database, what you do is you first create a variable that is going to be the connection variable. You're going to use this all over the place. So make sure that you spell it correctly, connection. And then you do SQL lita. This is what SQL library requires in order to connect to a database. So it's SQL little and then it will say here connect. This is like the DAX um, intelligence, neat, neat, neat. 
And then you need to connect to the data set that you downloaded here, so this one. So because it's already in the same folder where you have your note, then you don't need to put the entire path. It's enough to just say that it's murder mystery dot db. That's what you need to do. And then shift enter, so you start a connection. So now we want to see what the contents of the database is, right? So we're going to query that. We're going to query the database, and then we're going to use pandas and convert it to a data frame. So pandas, this is the most important thing you will ever have to learn. <laughs> pandas calls data frames tables. It calls columns series, right? And then indexes are like rows. So if you put that mental map in your head, everything is going to be a lot easier because I was super confused when I heard a series all the time and data frames like, what is that? Data frame is a table, a series is a column, okay? So with that, you gain like 50% of knowledge. Okay, so data frame, we're going to create a variable for that is going to hold the table that we're going to load from the database. So data frame, normally you will see in a lot of the tutorials, that they use DF as a shortcut for data frame, okay? So DF, that's why you will see DF everywhere. And then we're going to use a pandas function to read the content of the uh, database. So we're going to do read SQL query, was in there, thank you very much. And then we're going to do SQL query. So select, I'm not good at SQL, but you can Google it and you know, it works. So select, name from SQL lead the master and then where type this is this is the way you connect I mean this is how you do it and then you need to do double quote because we have simple quotes outside so it doesn't get confused and then here you put the table okay and then shift enter to execute Oh yeah, and we need to say con, this is use this connection that you created before. And now executed is not returning anything because you need to say now, okay, read the, the contents of that new data frame, that new table. And here we have it. Nice, right? Okay, so now I wonder if we should drop the solution tables first. Probably we should do it. So. Oh, I don't have it because I've already dropped it. Just let me reload this data set. It will get back. A few moments later. Okay, I'm back. Here we have the solution table again. Make sure you make copies. Obviously, on um, on uh, GitHub, you're going to always find the database, like clean database. Nobody's going to touch that. So you will, will be fine. You have a copy there, but oh, you can always have a copy yourself. Okay. So we're now going to drop the solution table. We don't want the user to be able to query the solution, obviously. So let's get rid of that. So we're going to query that using a SQL data. So to do that, you have to call a con, well, con is for the connection, but it's a cursor function, if we would call it like that, that allows us to execute things on SQL little. Again, this is the way you work. You need to Google it or learn it. That's, that's how it works. And then we're going to do cursor execute. And then we're going to drop. So this is um, SQL syntax. Drop table. And then you tell which table you want to drop. And the one that we want to drop is the one that is called solution. Shift enter, and this should drop the table. So let's go here and query it. Let's do a new, you can do, if you press B, it will create a new one. So if we now query the F, solution shouldn't be there. I, I found it that it was a little bit, you know, if I run this, it's going to give me an error because the table does not exist anymore. So let me refresh it. As you can see, it's gone here now. And then 
it should be gone here now. Okay, perfect. So now we don't have a solution table anymore, so the user will not be able, or the player will not be able to query it, obviously. Um, one thing I wanted to do is to, because we're going to, if you remember during the game, we're going to give them a list of the tables, and the list of the tables is basically this list, but we wanted to, you know, make it as a list, so it looks a little bit pretty. So to change the way that this is written, the rows, we're going to do like this. We're going to need to be very careful with these. I'm going to show you why. So you write df and then to access a column, you do df and then the column name, which is this one. So df name, and then you do str replace and then you do uh, underscore with um, space, and then we're going to also change the SDR title, so it gets capitalized on the first, like, you know, proper in Power Query. Um, and then I'm going to press Enter, be very careful now, and press the F, so it's going to show us the results. And this is something quite interesting. So if I now press Shift, Enter, is going to execute this, and um, it's already giving me an error. So let me do this one first and then do it again. So now it doesn't give me an error, why? So let me show you. So when you do like this, do you see that the format of the table has changed? So this one looks like a table, this looks more like a list. Well, I'm going to show you. So if I put here a type and shift enter, so it's giving me an error. Let me run it again. I'll tell you in a second why. And then run it again. Do you see here? It says that this converts everything into a series. And if you convert that into a series, you get just a series back instead of a table. We want to get a table back. So to get a table back, you put df.name in here. And then run it again. Um, obviously, because it was converting into a series, you know, Sirius does not have this DR, only data frame has it. So you have to convert it to a data frame again and then run it again. And now that it's a data frame, you see, okay, now I got a data frame out of these. I can remove the type and I can do the F and it'll show a table. So you can only use SDR with data frames, not with Sirius. So if you convert it into a series and then you rerun this column, it's going to give you an error. Very confusing. You are going to use type, by the way, all the time, all the time, because it's not super clear what returns what, at least for me, maybe because I'm a beginner, but type is very useful to know, okay, what am I managing? Is it a data frame? Is it an array? Is it a, a series? Is it what? And then you can apply the functions that you need to the different types, okay? So now we have our list that has um, underscores, uh, that it, you know, replace underscore with spaces, and we have proper casing. And what we want is to show this as a list, not as a table. So here is the list. You know, well, we could show it as a table too. Probably we will show it as a table. We will do it in Matplotlib, but for now, list. So we are going to transform this into a list. To do that, you do df. This is still called df. And you're going to do df name. We're going to do this on the column called name, and then we're going to convert it into a list. Shift enter, and then the F, and let me run this, and there we have our list with the proper, you know, uh, writing. Okay, cool. Now let's go to query the information for each table. We're not going to query the data yet, we're going to just query the information. Now, how do you do that? So this is SQL little again, but doing it with um, pandas. So this is the way you do it. So I'm going to call it like that, df table. And then you use read SQL query again to with the pandas. And then you use this pragma table info. 
Uh, that's the way it works. You just Google it and it shows. And here you put the table name. We're going to query, I don't know, person's table. And then we're going to execute it, the EFT, otherwise we don't see anything. Shift enter. And there you have the table. And then here you can put income. You can put any table you like and it will give you the information about that table. Interview. How neat, right? So we can display these to our user. So your job now for Byte 5 is you will have to do, again, this part. So you will have to give them this introduction, make sure it returns the list of tables, and then you do this. This is basically a while through if. Okay, so we've done this. You know how to do it. So first you will ask the user a question. Which table would you like to see? And depending on the answer, you will feed this with a different table. So if they say one, you have crime scene report. If they say two, you have driver's license and so on and so forth. And uh, that's all you need. If they say, and then you have to, well, while true, you have to say, after they ask, let me go here, after they ask, they, they say, okay, there you go, you need more help. Uh, until they say no, and then you say, great, let's do something else. Okay, so that's your job. You have everything that you need to do it, I think. <laughs> so give it a go. And uh, I will see you again for bite six.